Good morning. Uh, today I'm going to introduce you to Bloody Big Battles, the rule system created by Chris Pringle for fighting uh, battles in the 19th century up to the early 20th century. And the rule set for which my scenario book, together with Chris Pringle again, created for the Balkan Wars was done. So I'm going to start by essentially going through the process of building the battlefield and showing you the first turn, hopefully, uh, for my scenario for the Battle of Oversea or Skandemlark from the war between Denmark on one side and Austria-Hungary and the Kingdom of Prussia on the other side in 1864, the Second Schleswig-Holstein War. So first of all, I've prepared the basics of the table, laid out my grid, and when you want to uh, create the maps from scenarios in BBB, which tend to be very serious about uh, depicting the terrain, uh, the best start is to essentially grid the map out. And there are many ways to do it. I use small markers to mark the grids. So here, for example, I'll just use dice and the processes. Quite simple, all of you that have been war gamers have used it in the past. I use a measuring stick and slowly, slowly, I measure out the grid lines. PBB, each square grid is 12 inches. We got our first one there, we got our second one there, and this battle is fought on a 3x3 three three table. So it's a bit more easy to do than some of the bigger ones. Of course, there are better ways to do this, everybody is gonna do it in whichever way they consider easier. Okay, so now I've greeted it out, so I can start laying the terrain. So, makes sense to first lay the uh, level 1 terrain and the waterways. So, you can see the scenario map here on the internet. Uh, everybody has their own way to try to represent a uh, BBB terrain. Vincent Tsao, for example, prefers to print the maps out, and that's pretty cool. Uh, my solution has been to essentially cut terrain tiles like this in various degrees and then to slowly build the terrain one tile at a time. I found that this gives me a lot of control over the terrain, so I'm quite happy with it. So I'm going to put the camera down here and uh, show you how it works. Okay, so following closely our map as much as possible. I'm not going to be exact because, well, I don't want to be that exact, I'm not a photographer, but you know, to get, to represent the model on the ground. So let's see, following closely, from the top of the map down.
Now, I'm putting the second level. So this is this is essentially the start of it. I didn't have enough dark green ones, so I know it doesn't look very beautiful, but we got the basic terrain, and then I essentially build the second level. Depending on how many tiles you've cut, you can make it much higher, much more 3D. That's completely up to you and what you like. I use these uh, brown tiles to represent different levels uh, of terrain in BBB and BBB requires it, especially the Balkan War scenarios are pretty much heavily, so you know, if you So I've placed most of the high ground. There you can see the scenario map here, and you can see. The... So now it's the time to put the sun Klelmark C. And again, depending on your mileage, the availability of terrain, in your boxes, uh, how you go about building this is up to you. Once more, I use my uh, jigsaw puzzle of uh, waterways and sandal box sea goes yeah, right under there. Again, we're not trying to make it perfect, we don't want to make it perfect. Now, the and that, that's, that's it. You can check that out, you see? I paid, put in this tree over here. That looks good. Okay. And I got this. And there you go. And you know, you can remove this to put units and so on. Uh, classical stuff every war gamer knows. Now, what I'm not representing on the map is the knicks. So the whole area is essentially cut by these small areas of vegetation, kind of like a bocage, but not exactly. Uh, we've placed the basics of the terrain. Now it's the time to place the stream. Okay. and any villages. That's that. Our table is ready for the game. Okay, it probably took about 30 minutes to set up. Uh, the sandal mark is frozen. Uh, I'm not gonna put any, you know, I'll just put these things on, make it look like a frozen lake. Again, depending on your, maybe I'll put some on the top of the high ground. 
make a feeling that the snow is up there. Uh, now, if you want, you can totally make it all snow. That's completely fine. It's up to you and you know the availability of terrain you have. So that's it. Okay. Let me show you now the army. Okay. My friend Amir is supposed to come with his dance. I painted those dance. It's a gift. Uh, so over here you see Galvanes. Uh, again, let me remember the name of the court. is fried okay uh, six core and in bbb essentially armies are made up of units which are groups of bases so essentially this is one base depending on the scenario it can represent anything from 150 to 100 men which is the case here to essentially 5,000 or 7,000 men, which is the case in some of the bigger scenarios like Konigrads and so on. And a unit is made at least of two bases, up to seven bases. So here we got essentially one four base Jager unit, one second base Jager unit, the Haller force. We got two six base uh, uh, regular infantry units. Uh, one of them is the uh, first and the other the second battalion of the 27th Belgian uh, infantry regiment and we also have the first and second battalion of the 14th infantry regiment there's a general general Galban is over here represented by this and we got the Liechtenstein uh, hussars over there but represented with the uniform that is closer to the Polish raised uh, I think Radetzky or Razelski hussars I'm not sure plus one two three four artillery batteries instead of two guns so in the game every army is made up of this uh, and the units move as a whole and infantry units can take essentially three formations they can be in a march formation which helps them uh, move better they can be in an assault formation which helps them uh, fight better in close combat and there can be in a line formation which of course maximizes their shooting ability uh, as long as you got three or more bases you can go into assault formation two base units cannot go into assault formation they can only go into march or line and the same goes for cavalry you know assault march and line okay uh, artillery has only two formations, either it is deployed or it is limbered. If you have the limber models, you just put the limber model next to uh, your artillery unit. If you don't, you usually just turn it the other way from the enemy. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, when my friend comes, I'll try to go through the first turn so you guys get an idea of the dynamics. Okay, so now my friend has come. And we can start the game and uh, we've deployed for the first turn and deployment is based on scenario rules in this game the Danes deploy in the southern uh, third uh, uh, two-thirds of the table while the day the Austrians deploy in the northern one-third south is that way north is this way so we got two uh, of the uh, Danish units hiding in the woods in a uh, movement column and artillery piece deployed there and the other two are in uh, good ground for defense in line and behind there at Bilskov as the rest of the Danish starting force while the Astros just start with a cavalry unit three artillery and galbanes the rest are coming in as reinforcements okay so we started and the first thing you do is you try to move your units every unit is moved by rolling two die six and comparing it to the move table depending on whether it is at uh, good order or disrupted so you roll two dice for example here uh, I actually rolled before and I got a 1 and a 2, so I'll change them to that. I'm trying to roll to move the Hussars. They got 1 plus 2, 3, plus 1 for the General being next to them, that's a 4. Then we look at the table and we see that 4 is no move, so they can't move. Then I decide not to move any of my units. Because I attempted to move 
the Usars, whether they actually were able to move or not, Emir now and his Danes get to fire defensive fire. They can fire defensive fire on any unit that attempted to move, whether it succeeded or not, anywhere along its line of movement. We'll show that later. So now Emir uh, can decide whether he wants to fire. He said he wants to fire and the only unit that can really fire is his artillery over here because it's on a level 2 hill, it's above this forest, so it can fire over it. If this unit was uh, somewhere here, for example, then that artillery will not be able to fire at it. But it's far enough, it's essentially 3 inches far enough from the forest, so he can fire at it. So first of all, we calculate the range, and you can always range uh, in BBB without any problems. And we see that the range is essentially 9 and 9, 18. His gun is uh, rifled artillery, so we go to the gunnery factors. Rifled artillery at 18 inches, that's 3. So it starts with a firepower of 3. Okay, so he rolls 2 dice. Okay, and he gets a 9, that's a very high score. So we compare then the roll 9 over here with a firepower which is 3 that means up to 2 up to 4 so it's between 2 and 4 so it goes to the up to 4 that means a T that means that any unit gets disrupted and if it was a trained or raw unit moving it will be stopped at its tracks uh, however because this is cavalry and it's an easier target for artillery the T goes up one right shift in the columns and becomes a V. Again, no big change, but one more will have led to a loss of a base. So essentially, the Usars are disrupted, which will affect their ability to move later. Okay, with that shooting, it doesn't have any other range. So now we go to the offensive fire phase, and in the offensive fire phase, the active player does his fire. So in this phase I'm gonna open fire with my artillery and uh, since I can't see those units because they are beyond three inches in the woods I can either fire on the artillery up here on the hill or one of the units over there so in BBB it's a good idea to concentrate your fire and artillery fire is always dangerous so I'm gonna try to silence those guns so again we look at the distance distance is 9 plus uh, 6, 15, 17 let's say, that's 17, they're rifled artillery, up to 18 inch, between 18 and uh, 12, it's 3 firepower, so 3 plus 3, 6 plus 3, 9, 9 firepower, we roll to dice, that is 9, 9 on 9, we go and look, 9, Oh, 9 is a 1, okay? In, no, in artillery, uh, if it was a normal unit, it would lose a base. If it was a 2 base unit, it would be removed from game. But because this is artillery, instead of getting destroyed, artillery gets reduced. If an artillery gun receives 2 reduced results, it is destroyed. Reduced artillery is very... Uh, vulnerable. Also, it becomes silenced and we'll show how that works later on. Okay, so I fired my guns, uh, I did my moves. He fired his defensive fire, I fired my offensive fire, now it is Emir's turn to move. So this is the first turn for Emir. Move. So first of all he decides what he's gonna move. Uh, I am rolling for the artillery first. Okay, that artillery is, excuse me for a moment, there's a special rule for it because historically the commander of the artillery was a bit of a passive person. That artillery is passive. A passive unit receives a minus one on its movement rolls. At the same time, through it's limbered, which puts it at plus one, so that's a zero. So he rolls the dice. And it gets a 3 plus 3, 6. And we go back to the command table and we see that a 6 essentially is half move. So that artillery can move up to 6 inches. 
Now, in the normal games, roads can double the movement, but because this is a Skarnamak Oversea and the roads are frozen, it only moves six inches. Each uh, area here is three inches, so this will be six okay. inches, two of those will be six inches. Uh, okay, it moved over that, so it gets disrupted. Because it moved over the frozen uh, lake, but it's not silenced. So remember that. Okay, you have to move this. You have to, because it is silenced automatically, uh, limber it and move it six inches away from the enemy. Away from the enemy. That's not away from the enemy. Okay. That's a ne necessary move. It's unavoidable. Okay, and we take that off. Okay, and then you can move your next unit. Okay, uh, Dragoons. Okay, the Dragoons are in column of flying, so they get a plus one to their movement. Uh, but they are also passive, so get a minus one, so zero again. And that's a two, and that's no move, nothing. So they stay where they are. Essentially, they were milling around, the orders were not understood, and so on. Any other move? Uh, currently, I don't have any other move. Okay, so now I get to do a defensive fire, a cold fire here or here if they were within range, but they're not within range, so it's unmeaningful. So now we go to the offensive fire, so Emir can fire. Unfortunately, none of his units are within range to open fire. With muzzle orders, the maximum range is 9 inches, so no one is in range yet. So that brings to end the first turn. So we go to the second turn. And that's how pretty much the game goes on. So I'll stop here and maybe I'll show some uh, uh, other special rules. So now we might have the chance. So now it's important because... Okay, so this is turn three. Uh, the Austrians are, were waiting to get units to create mass to try to take the objectives while the Danes are moved to take defensive positions. The Danish artillery is in disarray but they still have a good defensive position, but now the Austrians are trying to essentially outflank it. So we'll see how it works out, but they're losing time, the Austrians. So now uh, I moved and Emir gets his defensive fire and he can fire essentially on almost all my units because all my units try to move except from these two artillery. So this, 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 this and that. So Emir, where do you want to fire? First of all, I want to combine if, uh, these two units on this okay. unit. Okay, so these guys, one, two, three, four, and these guys, one, two, three. Let's see if that one can, because there's a 45 degree. Uh, yeah, okay, those units can combine on this. Uh, your other option is, well, those are too far. If any of Emir's units could fire down this line, and they had a successful result, they could force the unit in defensive fire to stop here or here or here. So in defensive fire, you don't fire just at the final position of the unit, but you can fire anywhere along its axis of advance. Okay, so Emir is combining, so we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight firepower. Roll. That's three plus one, four. And we look at that again. 4 on 8 is unfortunately nothing. Okay, the fire was too ineffective, too far out in the range. Uh, this unit can fire if you want. They will fire to the Jaegers. Now, here we can try that. Do you want to fire the Jaegers at this position or do you want to fire at them when they're here? When, when they are right here. Right here. And you can fire at them in their original column formation. Yes, exactly. Okay, because uh, it's defensive fire. So if yes. he's firing at the Jaegers along their line, he can do that anywhere within that range. He's firing here and where they're in a column formation, which means he's gonna get a plus. So open fire. It's one, two, three, four, but because of this rabbit, it becomes two firepower. That's seven. So. Normally, seven on a two is nothing. Uh, the Jaegers were in column, so it goes to four, still nothing. And the Jaegers have a skirmisher, so it goes down to nothing. So he's not able to stop the Jaegers with the firepower. And that's pretty much it. The rest of his units are too far away. Now that's why defensive fire works. So now it's my offensive fire phase. You saw that before, so I'll close. Here. Okay, reinforcements in BBB. 
can come in uh, from according to scenarios, and they always come in assumed to have to be in command, so they have a plus one. And if you put them also in uh, March com, they have a plus two. Uh, so now it is my fourth turn, and I've been too slow. I only have two turns to take at least one objective, so this is going to be very hard. So I have to go fast, fast, fast. So first of all, I have to roll for this unit because it is disrupted. It is within six inches, so plus one. And that's four, plus one, five, plus one, six. No move, rally in place. That's a very good result for the Danes. Then over here, my cavalry. My cavalry must try to go forward. And finally, it goes forward at nine. So I'll just send it directly to commit suicide. <laughs> the game has a zone of control. So any unit that moves within three inches of an enemy unit has to either move towards the enemy unit or away from it. So going from here directly to the objective won't work. I have to get rid of those guys. So we're going to see the craziness. There's going to be a cavalry charge against the forested area. This is what desperate measures demand. But they're hussars. They like dying, doing desperate things. Okay, over here. I have to roll for these guys. They are beyond six. Two plus one, three. No move. This artillery piece, I want to bring it back. Okay, six plus one, seven plus one, eight. It's enough. So it goes there and it also deploys artillery. So it moved essentially the equivalent of six and then it deployed using the remaining six inches of its move. Okay, this unit over here by itself, but the flanking unit nine. Okay, it can move up to 12 and deploy. I'm going to move it up to six because I'm scared of that cavalry and deploying it. You can see that over there. So again, half move, then change formation. And then very importantly, my Jaggers here, who in this game are very slow. Come on, Jaggers. Plus one. Two plus three is five plus one is six. So only six inches. Eh, well, you have to take what you can. Okay. okay. Units move in a forward, uh, in a straight line, except if they're cavalry where they can make up a 190 degree turn. And they move within the front arc. Any movement outside the front arc is with a minus three. And that is it. Ah, I also have my reinforcements, I forgot. So, let me roll for my final units. Okay, four plus two, six plus one, seven. Six inches. Okay. Another Austrian Imperial Infantry Regiment's Battalion. Okay, and the last one. 3 plus 3, 6, plus 1, 7, full move, 12 inches, okay, put them up there, there we go, okay, and I'll deploy them, I didn't say they were in March column, so they didn't get the plus one, so I'm going to put them in an assault column, hopefully to cover the back of the other unit that is attacking forward okay and that's it and we go to the defensive fire okay so uh, Emir did his defensive fire and he was unable to stop my hussars who make contact so now we're gonna do the close combat rules and close combat is based is done differently than firepower combat what happens is uh, each player rolls one die one for the aggressor and one for the defender so I roll a die and I get a four Emir rolls a die, he gets a 2, so we subtract the defender's dice from the aggressor's dice, so 4 minus 2 equals to 2, so there's a 2 a point advantage for the attacker, so positive points are good for the attacker, negative points are good for the defender, 
So then we look at this uh, effects. This is the defender in cover. The defender is in cover, that gives a minus one. So the positive two for the attacker goes to a one. Then, is the defender outflanked? No. Advantage, is there a numerical advantage? No, they're both equal in uh, numbers of bases, okay? Four bases versus four bases. Uh, aggressive, the Usars are aggressive and so are the uh, Danes because of Obres Müller. So essentially there's no advantage over there, we're still at plus one. In depth, nobody is in depth. Disrupted, yes, the uh, infantry, the Danish infantry is disrupted, so I get a plus one point, so we have a positive plus two. Low on ammunition, no one is low on ammunition. Fragile. Uh, no one is uh, fragile and finally spent uh, no one is spent so the combat ends with plus two plus two means that the attacker won the defender must retire three inches and the attacker occupies the defender's position and both are disrupted so Emir has to retreat his guys three inches, ignoring terrain penalties, away from the successful uh, attackers. This is a very rare thing, a successful cavalry attack and a wooden slope. <laughs> and into a wood. Uh, well, uh, everybody's aggressive in this battle. So Emir is moving his unit exactly uh, three inches away from me. Okay. Um, and we take that off. The general stays there. He has to move later okay. on. And then this guy's moving and occupy the position that was occupied before the defender and they are also disrupted. So the enemy was pushed back but wasn't broken. Uh, don't ask for too many things in this game. But it's good, it's good. We're pushing them back. Okay, so we're almost at the sixth turn, the final turn. We're starting and right now the uh, score is a draw, the Danes control one uh, objective, the other obje uh, one, the Danes control one objective, the Astrians one, and there have been uh, a couple of uh, powerful close combats over here, the Danes lost two battalions, so the whole regiment was broken by decisive action of one normal Austrian battalion and the Haller force of the Jagers. Over there, they are pushing. So it seems that's going to be a draw, which means that's a good result. Uh, okay, I, 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 am, I am really happy, and I just realized how much I missed the BBB. Okay, excellent. So we're done. Uh, the game ends in a draw, since the Austrians were not able to take the second objective. It was a fun game, and we really liked it. I hope you guys got an idea about how BBB works. We didn't go through all of the rule system, uh, but I think... I gave you a small idea how to build a table and how to run a battle, so hopefully you have a lot of fun and if you really are interested in the Balkan Wars, go and check out my uh, scenario book from Brigade Games.